All right. Uh, hello, Mento. This is uh for you and me only. No one else is ever gonna see this. It's just you and me. I'm gonna be talking about what I think about some of the updates, uh, some of the changes you guys did with a couple of the tanks. Keep in mind, I played about 40 plus matches today, and I I went over quite a few tanks, trying them out, seeing how they worked. Primarily, I went over ones that had a uh, bigger changes and then some smaller ones that i got alerted to to check out so uh primarily t32 e for the kriya vets but we're gonna go one by one with them so if you want to uh more than likely i'll take some time out watch it myself and see if i can put some time stamps down to help you find out where they are throughout it but i don't really know how to do that but i'll find out so yeah here we go is3 uh, please note, I did play this tank, and I did. I didn't go back to the, the starting turrets. I didn't go through multiple loadouts. It's back in my garage. I bought it the other day because I haven't played it since 2014, so I decided to play it. But um, no issues at all. Actually, I think the buff made the tank even better. It's not game breaking. It's always nice to see a tech tree tank outperform premiums, and that's the way I think it should be. You should have. Most of the time, tech trees outperforming premiums as much as you can. So IS-3, my opinion, all these buffs, perfectly fine, fantastic, no issues. Uh, IS-3A Fatherland, uh, frontal roof armor, rather than seeing the 30 millimeters that it has, this would be a lot nicer to see a 40 millimeter increase instead. Turret ring armor, completely okay with that 210 buff. Yesterday, I was having people go through not yesterday, this morning, whenever I jumped in this, because I wanted to play a match in it. I had people going through my side cheeks, but it, they're not really going through as consistently as they were prior to the update, but that could be due to the uh, penetration readjustments. IS-4 ammo count, um, well-deserved. You, you go through ammo in this thing like crazy. Uh, played a couple matches in the IS-5. It's still underperforming, but not badly. Not as bad as it used to be. Um, you know say underperforming but i got killed by a tier 9 so yeah let's not talk about this one other than that no this is a really good buff this thing has been around for a long time and i think this will help a lot more people look at it and think oh i feel like getting it the reload buff however this thing already had a really good reload to begin with and it's even better now um this is another tank i didn't i never ran a gun rammer on because its reload was already good to begin with i'm sorry my head's in the way but other than that even though it has a pike nose, I think it's 120 armor or one, yeah, it's 120 all the way around it. Uh, the frontal armor, if you'd like to bring that tank up and kind of give it a little bit more of a kick for, let's say, not players like me, but for newer players who want to get in and play it. Because a lot of the higher end community for Super Unicums, a lot of us agree that the uh, IS-5 is not a tank to play competitively in just because it it's lacking in a lot of categories. So up next, IS-6. I have not played this, but I heard a lot of compliments from people who did, saying that this is absolutely amazing. And honestly, the 0.7 reload here, completely okay. It's not like this thing has insane penetration. You got 175 base pin with 217 premium pin and 122. So it's not overperforming, but it's actually working out well and i would say that was a really good buff is7 i have never experienced something so fast in my life that's the wrong one that's the right one i also bought becky lynch don't judge me i did it because i said i was going to and i did yes okay ism um ism i have not played this one yet but I can ask a couple of guys to tell me what their opinions are on it. And they're, they're newer players. It's either that or I'll try and get their account from them for a day to play around inside of it. Or I'll buy it back. I've got 4.2 million silver, so I might do that to be able to give you an estimate on my opinion. Uh, the final gun reload, though, has my screen box out. 12 to 11.2. This thing already had a really good reload to begin with, and I find that 11.2 to be maybe a tad bit too much but at the same time it plays up against tier 10s but 
tier six is going to suffer the most from that reload buff. Now, the Scourge, Kree of Vets, one. Um, I did play this. I played about eight or so matches inside my Kree of Vets today, just by itself. And I can tell you now, um, that reload buff needs to be brought back. The accuracy for turret rotation, or during movement rotation, totally fine. But having a 10 second reload is without using a gun rammer. With a gun rammer 9.1, I bought a gun rammer and I didn't play with a gun rammer. Um, my reasons why this should be reverted back is I'll actually bring it over real quick and do heavy tanks. A quick comparison. This is going to end up a lot longer than 15 minutes, that's for sure. But I'm going to bring you right here so we have stat pages. Going to go back. Okay, starting off... We're going to take a look at the Kree events. We're also going to look at the base reloads. Keep in mind, gun rammer, all sorts of stuff. I might take myself off the cam here. And we got a better look at the uh, statistics. But starting off, power to weight, 15.16. That's one of the main reasons why I think we should revert the reload. Combined with that, I have a 46.2 top speed, top reverse speed of 22. Whenever it comes down to taking peekaboo shots, this tank is one of the best inside the tier 8 category. I know from experience out of uh, the 500 matches I've al almost put inside this tank that the reload buff that this thing received is a little bit over the top. So, original reload, 12.3. This is what it was dropped down to, I believe. 12.3. Okay, so we do see base statistics inside here. Nice, that's actually going to help out. So, 12.3. With all of my perks, I don't even run a gun rammer, just my crew. I dropped 2.3 seconds off my reload, which allows me to fire one round every single 10 seconds. And originally, you needed a gun rammer to get down to that reload. So, I never needed to sacrifice speed. I essentially got a free gun rammer installed on the tank. And I feel it actually outperforming a couple of other tier 8s in the category that should have better reloads because of their power to weight and top speed. Uh, for instance, the IS-3 Auto, as we come over here to take a look at this, taking a look, we have a 10.53 second reload as base, so the additional 2 seconds knocked off, but we have a power to weight of 10.61 combined with a top speed of 40 and a reverse speed of 15. However, with that 10.61 power to weight, this tank is lacking, it's a little bit slower, it struggles to get up to those top speeds and to be aggressive in combat, but once it is in combat, it's got a reload that is very threatening, but with the reload buff that the Kriavets got, it's a little bit too aggressive, and I find that the top speed combined with the reload and the mobility of the Kriavets that the reload buff was a little bit too much. Keep in mind, that is one of my favorite tanks to play, and I hate the fact that I'm going against one of my favorite tanks to play. But it's an honest opinion here for that. Coming back. And yeah, I have everything linked to my buttons. So whenever I tap something, it's going to go back and forth between everything. Okay, but Kriavets, um The accuracy during turret rotation, totally fine. Reload time. It's 50-50. Uh, Honestly, I would say see how this works out over the next month or so or next two months. And keep track of statistics. But I'm telling you now. Um, I would rather play the Scourge. Than play my IS-3A now. But then again IS-3A over in PC. Has a reverse autoloader. The first shell loading is the fastest. Second is a little bit slower. Third is a little bit slower. So there is that. If you guys were to add that to the IS-3A. I would probably play the IS-3A a little bit more. Okay. Now the KV-5. This is something that. Um. Slap a fish brought to my attention the other day. Looking at the armor viewer, I'm actually going to bring you back over. 240 on the turret. 230. 205. 190. 180. So we have a hatch in the front that's 180. And then 170. And then whenever Slap brought this to my mind, I was like, ooh, okay. So real fast, I'm going to pause. It's going to jump. All right, here we are. So this is the Minotaur. This one plays up against tier 10s. Uh, looking, we have 190 millimeters of armor. We have 180 on the hatches in the front. We have 150 side, 140 there. So essentially, 
um, without really thinking about it, you guys buffed the preferential matchmaking to a uh, pref tank, pref tank, with better turret armor than one that ends up against tier tens. Whenever Stop Fish mentioned this to me, I said that I would include it in this as well, just because you know it's um something that might have been overlooked, not really paying too much attention. Um, the gore wrench also got the same buff. So going back to the KV five. We're going to be look. Oh, dude, you got to be kidding. I'm, I'm going to tap. I can't even open this. It goes straight back to garage. Oh, you need to fix that. Oh, it's going to make it take so much longer. But yeah, uh, 240 compared to 190 on the Minotaur. But then again, 167, 219 penetration. Um, essentially made the turret on the KV-5 preferential tank better than the Minotaur. So that's one thing that I, I would love to throw out there just because I can. Ha ha ha. Coming back. Two, two, crit two, crit two, crit two. No, we gotta select it. Crit two. Yep, there we go. Um, I'm up it. Okay, object 212A. I sent you a message on this, and I mean it. Uh, Self-spotting SPGs are ridiculously overpowered. One of them is a tier five that had, I think it's 400 meters of your range. I can't remember the name of it, but it's a premium artillery that we have, and it's also on PC. That everyone hates it because it can spot for itself. Um, with the 15.6 power to weight and the 45 top speed, it allows it to be aggressive, getting into positions that can't be seen. And the fact that it can spot for itself and the reload buff. Reload buff, perfectly fine. I do not mind the reload buff. However, the view range and the top speed, I do mind. The reverse speed, not too worried about that. It's only 12. It's not like it's 30 or 20. If it was 20, it would allow this tank to really get behind and move fast. And, um, yeah, just 45 top speed is a little bit intense, especially with the view range. So, just, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. The view range, if you subtract the view range, that's literally it. You can leave the top speed alone, but that view range is gonna kill a lot of people. Um, up next, 257. I actually heard a lot of really good replies about this. Nothing too crazy. It's not overpowered. It's handling really well inside the queues. Uh, 45 millimeters on the top roof armor for turret 1. Um, everyone I asked to test this, they did not use the stock turret. They used the fully upgraded turret. So for newer players grinding out the tank, they're going to really enjoy the fact that they're not getting overmatched. Up next, we have turret 2 frontal armor from 30 to 60, which honestly everyone that has the fully upgraded turret and they're trying this out uh we did take this into a private match and we were using 155s and they had a blast because we were not pinning okay up next object 260 this buff is heavily appreciated except for the fact you over buffed it i'm not saying you mental i'm saying the developers so uh what i mean by over buff is i'm actually going to pause real quick and go grab a secondary mouse. That way I can show you the cutoff points that we should have. All right, and we're back. I got my mouse. <laughs> okay, so starting off with the Object 260, uh, taking a look at the top armor here, you can kind of see a little slant in the armor about right here. Little slant, nothing too crazy. So up next, we're going to go to the 55 millimeters of armor right here. Oh, gosh, dang it. You guys are screwing this all up. Uh, right here should be the cutoff point, that little line. And uh, actually, I'm going to bring up Tank's GG real fast as I'm being a Muppet. Wrong freaking one. Thank you. Full tank list. We're going to go Russia, Object 260, 3D model. We're going to go live. What I mean by this is that um, whenever you have a tank and you're kind of overexposing, it's always nice to know that if you come up too far or you start driving down a hill or let's say you're on an incline like this and your gun is pointing down. If we have that 55 going all the way across, there is no weak spot, and you can find angles that you're physically in pinnable, period. So for the back part, we're going to need 30, but the front of it at 55, that's the PC standard for this tank, but we do need that overmatch inside the back. Because if you don't have that overmatch, this turret will basically be in pinnable whenever it comes down to um, regular matchmaking. So that's something that... uh. We don't want to do. We don't want to have something too overpowered. We want to have that little bit of a space in the back. That way people have a spot to aim for. Rather than all of this being purple and only aiming for the hatch, which is small. You have this larger area in the back that you can hit. 
and punish someone for coming over a hill or essentially if they're hauled down like this this is how the 260 should be played super hard the pin even with heat rounds the only thing that really is exposed is the hatch and a portion of the cheeks against let's say like a yagru or 268 version 5 now okay so that is that gonna come back um yeah that's essentially 260 in a nutshell for me uh up next we're gonna be looking at the object 261 um terrain resistance i have no issue with that not a lot of people really do just because it's just terrain resistance it allows them to rotate quicker um terrain resistance also improves your travel speed uphill and through muddy terrain so that does make a little bit of a difference uh 263 honestly um these buffs they're appreciated but they weren't really needed but they're appreciated okay up next we have the 268 um honestly the health buff a little bit too much um i actually think you guys should take away the health uh turret rotation speed completely okay view range i approve of because you guys removed coded op well not coded optics you removed binoculars with update 6.0 so these will be okay reload time done the 16 seconds um my only reply to this is why does the e3 still have a 19.8 second reload sorry i'm gonna do it but yeah that's that's this uh accuracy during turret rotation totally fine uh left to right gun arc this was one of the tanks you mentioned to me that people were complaining about um if you take away the hit points you'll have no more complaints but you can leave every single one of these alone and it will be perfectly fine the 6 to 11 is actually the pc standard for this tank i looked it up and uh i approve because it's not too much it's not too little um coming back over to tanks gg uh what i'm going to do is give you an idea on what i look at for whenever i'm looking at a tank to see if it's overkill or not and for me looking at the live armor model we're going to go full 11 on the uh, left side. We're going to angle towards. And this is still pinnable by tank destroyers. But against, let's say, for instance, a heavy tank, we're going to say uh, standard penetration 258 and 340, which IS-4 should have. So 258, we still have a little bit of green on the inside. We have green on the hatch. Uh, even if the tank was swapped to the other side, we still have a little bit less because of different angles. But if they're trying to peek around a corner, they're not immortal. And to me, that's what matters, is that they're not immortal. But this is using your armor smart. This is being smart about your armor. Trying to keep your lower plate covered. Um, honestly, the buffs in this tank, perfectly fine. But the hit points, in my opinion, were a tad bit too much. And that the hit point could be dropped down. Or you guys can see how long this will last and see if it helps out with the matchmaking and see if it jumps up its win rate or not. Uh, primarily, though, I find this to be a little bit too much combined with almost doubling its uh, build of view with its weapon. Uh, 268 version 4, some people are complaining about this buff with the 260 to 300. However, with the old RNG before you guys brought it back we were bouncing off that low plate to begin with so for me there's gonna be no difference i usually don't aim at it to begin like at all so the 300 millimeters i'm okay with it but a lot of people i talk to are not uh just because as it's coming up over a hill yeah but pc has a 300 so i don't see why we have a problem with this they want that to be impenable because it's supposed to be impenable you gotta aim for the 85 millimeter low plate or wait for the 100 millimeter top plate to be exposed not just load the premium rounds and kill the tank instantly so this i do approve of i would love to see a power to weight buff on this tank as well along with uh the top speed buff the pc has but that's my personal opinion um don't include that in the uh, report next up 268 version 5 a lot of the armor buffs on this are driving people insane you have no idea how many messages i got today about this tank and my experiences against it so far today. They were not exactly super nice. Uh, overhauled gun armor. I'm okay with the turret. But the only thing I'm not okay with is the hull. If you revert the hull armor. I'm pretty sure you'll get some better feedback. Don't even mention that you have the uh, armor panels on top of the tank. Overhauled. Just the hull armor. 
Other than that, that tank's um, a little bit too strong at this moment in time. Object 277, I have not played this tank, but I can tell you now, I'm seeing a lot more of them, and it makes me happy that I'm bouncing off their top plate, because beforehand I used to not. So this, I'm just going to say 277, this buff, heavily appreciated. Um, much love from me as well. I'm getting ready to uh, start grinding this tank out again and just have some fun. Uh, 279E, honestly, reload time buff, mm, aim time buff, accuracy buff. Uh, revert the aim time, leave the reload. We do not need this aim time. We do not need fast aim times on Russian tanks. Especially since right now everyone's thinking that there's a massive Russian bias. So this, revert the aim time. Everything else looks perfectly fine. Um, they did the medium terrain at 1.5 and they left the soft terrain at 2.5. So this, this is okay. As long as people are running off-road driving on this tank, it'll feel a lot better. So, yeah. Other than that, aim time, a little bit too much. Uh, up next, 705. A lot of people are enjoying this as well, so I'm just going to skip past it. The 704, completely okay. Only a 0.2 second buff. Accuracy only got a 0.1 buff. Uh, honestly, anyone who complains about this, they're, they're not thinking too well. Because that thing has needed some love for a minute. Now, 705A, I played three matches inside this tank. They weren't exactly great matches. Then again, it's not like every single game you can have a good game. But that engine power buff felt amazing. It was super responsive, doing everything I wanted it to. And just, it felt pretty good. I didn't even notice that there was a reload buff, to be honest. I, I just played the tank and was having fun. Uh, like, this buff, this engine power buff, made this tank just that much better. Uh, up next, object triple seven. Where are we at? 21 minutes? Holy crap. Sorry, Mento. Killing you. Uh, repair cost. I actually don't know what this means, unless this is uh, after battle. Damage per second. Not worried about it. Reduced ammo cost. Hopefully it's not like the IS-4 and all those other tanks. Okay. Turret rotation. Approved. Gun depression. Approved. Aim time. Approved. Honest to God, this was needed whenever you guys first added the tank. Um, I actually made a call whenever you guys first did this. They might buff it to 26 or 27. And you guys were actually one or two ahead of me, depending on the time. Um, SU-122-54, a little bit overkill on the reload. This thing's already got an insane reload with its maxed out gun. Uh, the aim time, a little bit too much. The accuracy, a little bit too much. You can leave the reload, but drop the aim time, drop the accuracy. Or raise the accuracy to 0.44. Because this is on par to the Grill 15, which has got some of the best accuracy in the game. Uh, aim time, it's not like it's 1.9, but 2.3 is still really good aim time. Actually, you know, no, this is a mounted turret that doesn't even have a turret. Uh, you know what, actually, I take that back. Aim time, perfectly fine. Uh, accuracy at 0.34 would have been better, or not even messing with the accuracy at all. Uh, up next, T10, I appreciate this myself. I play this tank. If anything, this tank has needed a little bit of a buff for quite some time, except for the reload. That reload was a tremendous buff. And I can say that right now because I three marked it and I've had a lot of fun. Now I'm getting into the ones that actually got me worried and still have me worried. Keep in mind, these are game breaking changes. I'm not talking about anything else. All those other tanks, they're balancing. They're okay. Sometimes the armor model is a little bit screwed up. But T-54 and the M-46 Patton with what they did with the guns is game-breaking. And I'm not talking a little bit. I mean extremely game-breaking. Okay. Coming down to the new shell. From 219 to 264, 264 is reserved for Tier 10 vehicles, not Tier 9s. Um, there's almost no Tier 9s in the game that have this penetration. Compounds are 50 ton. Not even the E50 has this. Um, the M46 Patton originally had 218, 265, but then they buffed all sorts of guns that have that penetration and felt it was inadequate on the Patton. Rather than that, you could have buffed the Patton's penetration from 218 to 225, Leave it alone, because it's already got really good top speed, really good power to weight, fantastic view range, but now it has a gun that travels at 1,500 meters a second with 264 and 330 heat pin. Now, imagine how a tier 7 fills 
when it gets hit with 264 APCR pin at 1,315 velocity. And the fact that they increased the accuracy of the gun from 0.39, which is a derpy one, to a 0.33, which is almost pinpoint precision. So this buff I disapprove of heavily. And I mean heavily. This is game breaking. To give you an idea on game breaking, here's a patent. Keep in mind, these were played by the same player, Scareface, today. Um, these matches were back to back to back to back. And then one match. This would be the only match that wasn't back to back. This would be one match and then this match. So, 6,000, 5,000, 490, 8,045. Remember, these were back to back. These ones that I'm showing you now are all back to back. 5,900. 5,400, 8,463, and I asked him his opinion on the tanks. He stopped and told me he believes that this tank needs to be nerfed because it is too powerful. This is his uh, 17 matches that he played today, and taking a look at his average... 4,934 damage. He was averaging 4,000 damage a match with a 52.94 win rate. Um, damage ratio 3.9, kill death ratio 5.0. Keep in mind, this is a very good player. This is not a bad player. This is a very good player of the game. And he's someone that I play with and that we test tanks back to back to see if, you know, it's overkill. And he told me, that the patent buff on the M46 patent, that penetration is too much on a tier 9, and the fact that it ends up against tier 7s and they stand absolutely no chance. Because not just does the patent and the T54 have this amazing power to weight, but they also have top speed and decent armor. That mix with high penetration and high velocity rounds, which they never miss, is a. Um, kind of a mix for a bad combo to give you an idea on this player i'm going to come up to his official stats right here i'm going to remove myself out of the cam actually i'm just going to do this whatever that's what time it is 11:02 p.m a little bit late for me but this buff on this tank a little bit too much up at the top left here we have it taking a look we got the 390 damage which is the problem the 390 268 330 10 second reload so this thing has the same reload as the E5 before the update. Along with that, we had the 430 version 2, which also has 264 330 heat pin. But this is also a back-mounted turret, and this line is known for high penetration. Honestly, we could leave this alone, and I'd be okay with that. But between the T54 and the M46 Patton, 19.87 power to weight. And you also guys gave it 0.33 accuracy, along with 264 pin. Um, in my opinion, this is a little bit game-breaking and too much. 19.3 horsepower to ton, a little bit too much. 15.91, totally fine, with a top speed of 55. This, to me, is balanced. However, the 46, this is a little bit too much, especially since it has some of the best view range in Tier 9 at 410, which means it can now spot its own targets... 1500 meters per second rounds at 268 um they're just landing left and right and yeah um t54 and m46 Patton. i think that the shell speed is overkill the new penetration is too much tier sevens are going to suffer even more than what they are now so if you want to try and avoid that backlash with these tanks i would recommend to tell the balancing team that uh you have an old super tester telling you that these are a little bit too much. Uh, other than that, T-54 lightweight, I, um, I did end up against one of these. I did get shredded. However, I'm not going to complain about it. I deserved it. I played like a Muppet. And this guy played absolutely fantastic. The 6.6 .6 base reload, though, with the um, 100 here. A little bit fast. It's, it's a little fast. But nothing too crazy. It's all right. Okay, coming up next, we have USA Boghor. Totally fine. I ended up against one of these. I did not feel like these buffs were too much. If anything, they were perfect. Um, I have not yet looked at the top armor of this tank, or for the model. 
but it is what it is. Capture King Tiger, told you my opinion on this. I think that this is a fantastic way to bring the line back, and hopefully you implement that into all tanks. Uh, Chrysler K, totally okay. This thing has horrible base penetration, so reload buff, not worried about it. Concept 1B, have not played it, but I guarantee this is going to feel amazing. And now the Patton. I already stated my opinion on these. These buffs are extremely too much because you also gave this a heat round from APCR and changing the character the characteristic of a tank originally people fired nothing but premium out of this tank to get that extra shell velocity to be able to three market without a problem but now you basically gave them a 1478 travel round with 268 base pin and now they don't even need to load premium they literally load premium now just to handle haul down super heavies that are in the way. So for me, this was too much and I would like to see it brought back down. So just know that is my opinion. I'm sorry, dude, this is taking a year. Uh, M4120, totally fine. M60, um, I would like to see the concealment reverted. Reloads perfectly fine, but concealment's not. M103, buff perfectly okay. No problems there. T25 at T, totally fine. I'm actually beginning to buying this back this week to go ahead and give this new uh, setup a try. I'm actually excited about that. Uh, Patriot, perfectly fine. T28, perfectly fine. Uh, perfectly fine, fine. T30, felt amazing. No problem there. Uh, T32, okay, now we're jumping into um, this category. To give you an idea, the hall armor buff was too much. Going over to YouTube, um, I did a stream earlier today, so I'm just gonna remove myself from the factor and hit play so this is the armor test that i was doing we were taking a look at tier 10 so we have a death star uh, we have a e4 a badger and an is7 and their goal was to fire at the rear armor on top and originally this is supposed to be an overmatch point but it was not being overmatched it was bouncing already up to 4,000 damage uh, not much of a problem there. And right here, Scare was talking about... We were showing off Scare stats during the M46 gameplay. But the armor on the rear end of that tank is tremendous and really needs a debuff. Rather than 76 millimeters, it would be nice to see it lowered down to 45. And the rear armor with the cutoff point, the cutoff point is very clear. It's kind of like a little metal bar that sticks out of the tank. Lowered down to 38 to the original number. T-34 today felt absolutely amazing. No complaints. I think it's a really good idea. Um, the hatch buff was a tad bit too much from... Uh, what was it? It's 177. You guys brought it up to frontal armor. Um, yeah, just the hatch buff a little bit too much. Because I don't know if the T-29 got the same buff or not, but... Yeah, if it's on the T-29, a little bit too much. But on the tier 8, totally fine. T95, I have not yet tried this with the new rotational speed, but I'm going to. That's going to feel absolutely amazing. Uh, T95 V6, um, the health buff, that's PC standard. Uh, the hatch, I would like to see the hatch reverted back to 177.8. 203 is making tier 8s suffer. And then hull armor, this is totally fine. I had no issues with it. But the uh, hatch, this is making tier 8s suffer. I was inside my T-54E2, tier 8 heavy tank, and I was bouncing consistently <clears throat> with an autoloader off of the 203, even though I was aiming directly at the flat spot. Uh, T-1103, I said this before, 17.9 would bring this back in the meta. E4, uh, too much armor, too much armor, too much armor, tested it on stream today. Uh, 1 versus 3, and I just took a position, sat still, they all sat still. I blocked 7,000 damage and uh, died. But the thing is, I blocked 7k. And they were struggling to pin it inside of a haul down position <clears throat> on Mountain Pass. So I was guarding the uh, back alley, which really, it's just a gun down position. Uh, normally, if you take that thing to that spot, it's uh, hardcore. Up next, we have the Tortoise. The Tortoise is one that I was, you know, wanted to go over. Um, FV215B, this armor rework was absolutely amazing. Um, I find Commander's Hatch buff to be a little bit too much. Down the 154, 152 would be perfectly fine. It's already really hard to hit that to begin with. I'm starting to lose my voice. <coughs> <coughs> 
Um, up next, we have the FV217. This is the uh, Badger side armor reverted back to 152.4. This is fantastic. I stopped playing it because you guys did the 120. But now that it's back to 152, I'm going to be pulling it out and, you know, wiping the dust off. Terrain resistance, it was really nice to see that you guys messed with this. It was sluggish to begin with because this is hard terrain at 1.4. And, uh, yeah, it was struggling a lot. 4,000 far Conway, perfectly fine. Reload a little bit too much on that Conway because it has such a high alpha. But that's about it. It's the only complaint I have. Uh, stage 2, 4,005, perfectly fine. The horsepower buff, um, I actually would like to see this horsepower... Drop down the PC standard at 850. Um, turret rotation speed felt really nice. It was still sluggish, but it's better than 12. But engine speed, horsepower, um, I would like to see this at 850 because that would actually make it balanced. Right now, it's hitting its top speed extremely quick, even going uphill. And it's maintaining its top speed uphill. So I think 850 would be a better buff because we don't want a tank going 34 kilometers up a hill consistently it essentially makes it faster than most heavies because they suffer going uphill um, unless it's an is7 right now which is insane um okay we have roof armor from 25 to 52 this is okay frontal armor from 228.6 to 273.1 this is okay honestly tortoise buff um the frontal armor is one of the only problems i have but even then, it was needed, so I don't really have much to say about this, except for if it's bounce rate over the next couple of months uh, starts to get up too high, that's going to be a massive issue. And, dude, you guys buff too many tanks. This hurts to go over, not lying. Sweden, um, accuracy non-siege mode. It did not need accuracy. It did not need a reload. This thing is already super scary to begin with. And uh, But then again, I am not a balancer in this factor here. Um, I find that the Stravs have extremely high concealment and that the faster you make their fire rate, the scarier that they become, especially in competition matches. Uh, Germany RU251, I had no issues going up against this thing whatsoever. Um, if anything, this thing did absolutely amazing and I have no issues with uh, what you guys did here. Other than that, Minto... I hope you have yourself a wonderful time. You fast forward to the very end of this. Uh, yeah, this is 37, almost 38 minutes long. I'm sorry for killing you. I wasn't expecting it to take this long, but I wanted to go over everything that went on. But yes, the ones that are right now absolutely game-breaking, and I mean consistently game-breaking, the M46 Patton, the T-54... Um, the T-32, it's not exactly game-breaking, it's just really strong, and, uh, I think just overlooked. Um, the top armor on the 260, you need to do that cutoff point. Um, E4, you already know what's going on with there, you already have enough feedback on that, you don't need my feedback on that. The hatch, you could leave the hatch alone, honestly, on the E4, I'd be okay with leaving the hatch alone, but revert the actual turret armor, that's what needs to go back. The hatch, I don't care. Turret armor, please. Um, and yeah, E3, um, 17.9 or even an 18 second base reload would make that tank absolutely viable again. But as of right now, it's, it's not, it's underperforming in my opinion. But then again, it also depends on the position you end up in with that tank. It could be absolutely amazing or it could be really bad. But yeah, honestly, this is my take on it hopefully this helps carnivon action x paladin aim time it's got a really fast reload this makes it where you don't ever have to stop shooting uh little uh redonkulous but it's okay other than that thank you have a great day i'm sorry this took 40 minutes it's long <laughs>